This is the Lucid Air Pure, and at $69,000 or $549 per month, it's a toned down version of its $249,000 Sapphire Sister. But don't let that deceive you because this has got some seriously impressive numbers. We're talking 4.7 miles per kilowatt hour of efficiency, a number that jumps to five miles per kilowatt hour of efficiency at 25 model year. It has a drag coefficient of 0.197. It has a range of 420 miles EPA or 464 miles WLTP. We're talking 330 kilowatts of power. This is punchy performance, ridiculous range, sensational engineering, all at mid-range prices. And the question is, how and why? Welcome to the Fully Charged Show. Love the Fully Charged Show? Then join us live in Canada this September, the South in October, and Australia and London in 2025. To answer those questions, I took the Lucid Air Pure for a spin along the swooping Skyline Boulevard and infamous Highway 1 in California, where I got the joy of understanding just how magnificent this thing is. We are putting this car through its paces. We're going on so many twisty, twiny roads, and what that's doing is just showing us how nimble and capable this car is. And to understand just how amazing it is from a dynamics perspective, it's worth just touching on what the damping and suspension setup is. Now it has active damping and it has coil suspension, not air suspension, and that is a little bit unusual. And it also has split upper and lower control arms. So they themselves are split and then the upper and lower control arms, they themselves are also split. And what that means is that it creates a virtual kingpin. And that means that the engineers can basically get this vehicle to do anything they want from a dynamics perspective and make it feel however they want from a steering perspective. And drivers get to feel the real benefits of that because unusually for an EV, what you can do in a Lucid is turn off stability control. And that gets you to really feel what the driving character of this vehicle is like. And from Lucid's perspective, what a badge of honor that they're like, yeah, turn off stability control, really see what this car is all about. And from that sense, this is a driver's car. This is a car for people who really, really enjoy driving. However, if you're also driving around town or on the highway, it equally feels totally manageable and really, really comfortable. Inside, the cabin feels beautifully crafted. The wraparound 35 inch screen has the effect of making you feel like you're cocooned in a cockpit. The materials feel plush, and whilst I would always love a glass canopy roof, I understand that's a first world problem. Everything has an acute attention to detail, as if you can still hear the murmurs of the engineering or design review that determined those details. Even the noises on the HMI have a delightfully mechanical sound. Driving along the hairpin bend, the car feels like a car. You're cognizant that whilst lines of code define EVs, so too do springs and dampers and physical mechanical parts, and when coordinated correctly, can conjure the feel of gliding on rails. But the key to that magic lies in the insane engineering. So to find out more, I paid a visit to Lucid HQ. Making a car is an extremely difficult and costly endeavor. Why bother making something from scratch? What was the aspiration? We need to uh, advance the state of the art of the technology of the EV. Uh, it's important to do this, to make it more affordable, to make it go further with less. The only way we could do that was develop in-house technology to move the, the needle onwards. That's why Lucid exists. We often hear this term design from the ground up. And I think for you it meant something slightly different in that it wasn't necessarily being design-led or engineering-led, but both. What's the result of that? Most cars are designed stylistically in the studio and then retrospectively engineers fit the parts in. That's the way Tesla Model S was done. Uh, the trouble is, that the studio doesn't always know what's possible with this new era of electric technology. So we, we turned everything on its head. Uh, the studio and engineering worked in sequence, almost like a game of tennis, uh, sharing the, 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 the service games between studio and engineering. That way, we designed Lucid Air from the inside out around the engineering package to create the most advanced car in the world. In between, the most base spec Lucid Air Pure that I was driving and the Sapphire sit the Touring and GT. And later this year, the Gravity, Lucid's $80,000 three row SUV, will join the lineup. And like its air siblings, it's had the same ground up approach. 
Lucid have developed loads of technologies in-house because they're aiming for a high degree of vertical integration, whereby components are made bespoke in-house to perfectly Tetris together within a unique EV architecture, rather than picking components off the shelf. And whilst that has the benefit of creating a product that's really, really fit for purpose, it does introduce an awful lot of cost, not least for a new company, not least for one still manufacturing at reasonably low volumes. But that vertical integration is absolutely crucial for achieving Lucid's mission of, in their words, the world's best electric vehicle. And the reason being is that they have two missions. Number one, to license their technology. They already have a partnership with Aston Martin, for example and two, to have this laser focus on efficiency. Peter's mantra is every millimetre counts and he is desperately trying to create technologies which increase those miles per kilowatt hour such that one day more and more people can benefit from smaller, lighter, more affordable electric vehicles. Why is vertical integration so important to Lucid? It's only important if you've got something unique. If what you're doing isn't eminently superior to what you can buy off the shelf, do not do it. Uh, vertical engineering sounds cool, it's only worthwhile if you have something extraordinary and then you need to nurture this precious thing and that's why we make all our electric powertrain in-house. Now if you're thinking a luxury sedan EV is slightly at odds with that mission, then I want to point out a couple of things before you jump to your conclusions. First of all, the coefficient of drag. We've already said that this has a coefficient of drag of 0.197. But to put that into context, the Ionic 6, which yes, does sit at a slightly different price point, but has a similarly swoopy shape, has a drag coefficient of 0.21. And there's a number of things that contribute to that really, really impressive drag performance, that aerodynamic performance. Of course, it's got the swoopy shape, but there's also a number of air ducts that help guide that flow as neatly as possible over the vehicle. There's one here that swoops over the top, and there's obviously an air curtain around the side. There are aerodynamic wheels, slightly smaller wheels. This has a slightly lower profile, all helping it to slice through the air. But there are also a couple of things that you can't see, including a rear diffuser or sort of a diffuser that sits underneath the vehicle and a battery pack that arches upwards to help guide that airflow underneath and around the vehicle to make sure that wake is optimised as best as it possibly can be. I'm going to continue with the comparison to the Ionic 6 for a second because I think they are interesting to look at side by side, particularly because they are so similar from an aerodynamic drag coefficient perspective. But Despite the Ionic 6 being cheaper, despite it having a smaller battery pack, it's 340 kilos heavier than the Pure. It's also just less efficient overall. It has 3.9 miles per kilowatt hour versus the Pure's 4.75. And there are a number of things that contribute to that. Not least, super amazing lightweighting strategies from the Lucid team, but also really, really efficient packaging, which they show off with this ultimate flex of this absolutely enormous frunk. It is 283 litres, that is three times greater than the Tesla Model S. And what it's really showing is, look how much space that we can give you for storage because we have been so efficient with our packaging elsewhere. And there are a few things that contribute to that incredibly efficient packaging. Mainly, or not mainly, but one of the things I really, really want to name check is their motor development, which they have done in-house and they now produce at their factory in Arizona. Now we know that electric motors are already really, really efficient, so you need to do something fairly extraordinary to create any kind of step change to be new and noteworthy. And what they've done is to combine or take the motor and put it into a single drive unit. That of course makes it much, much smaller. It combines many different components all in one place. And there are a couple of other things that continue to make it even more efficient to get that maximum sort of power density that they can out of it including this very, very bespoke and interesting copper winding, which has the effect of maximizing the amount of copper that they can squeeze into that motor without having the additional need for any additional spot welding. They've also done things like addressing cooling at source, so you're not having to bolt on this enormous cooling system afterwards. There are very clever lamination techniques within the stator to reduce losses via eddy currents. And put all of that together, and you manage to push the rev range out, the torque range up, and improve the overall efficiency. Truly, truly outstanding. 
Now it's worth pointing out that this is the most base spec version of a Lucid Air Pure that you can possibly order. This car claims to have an average efficiency of 4.75 miles per kilowatt hour. From 25 model year, that will go up to five miles per kilowatt hour. I have been in no way driving sensibly. We have obviously been trying to get our B-roll shots. I've been going, you know, accelerating and braking. And without even trying, we're doing 3.5 miles per kilowatt hour. In my Onyx 5, I would say that I'm having to focus on driving at 3.5 miles per kilowatt hour. So it is really impressive. And certainly on our drive back, I will try and see if I can get that illustrious 4.75 miles per kilowatt hour. One of the things that you talk about is how important efficiency is and using efficiency as a way to get to this future of smaller, lighter, cheaper electric vehicles. But what's the strategy for Lucid? Is it sort of pioneering technologies with the aim that they that innovation trickles down to those more affordable marks or actually making a smaller, cheaper, more affordable vehicle yourself? We had to start with the high-end car because the cost of industrialising a product is inversely proportional to the cost of the product itself. So it, it, starting with a high-end product made perfect sense. Uh, with the technology we're developing for that product suits uh, uh, more affordable models in the future, we aim to come down to a $48,000, $50,000 price point. Beyond that, I think it makes more sense for us to license our technology for another automaker to make the proverbial $30,000 car. Now, something that is really extraordinary is that often when you drive a car, you feel that acceleration and it's most acute going from 0 to 60, and in this car, it will do that in 4.5 seconds. But what is really extraordinary, and you will see this in other comments or in other videos that have also been done on the Lucid Air Pure, is the acceleration that happens beyond 60 miles per hour. It just doesn't feel real. It just feels like a car that could continue to keep going until you, I don't know, until you take off. It is such a joy. Between Lucid's manufacturing plant in Arizona and the one in Saudi Arabia, Lucid will have capacity to build 240,000 vehicles per year. That's 40 times more than it sold in 2023, signalling an aggressive push to become a major player in the global electric vehicle market. This massive expansion and their to-date sluggish sales, coupled with their singular focus on performance and luxury, I feel positions Lucid at an intriguing crossroads. One of the things that really strikes me is that the Lucid Air Pure and the Gravity at both ends of the spectrum are cars designed for people who love driving. They are so imbued with engineering prowess. But how do you see that changing in a world that is shifting towards greater levels of autonomy and a world in which we do have more shared vehicles and perhaps a more utilitarian approach to car ownership? Well, for me, driving is one of the great joys of life. Uh, I, I think that although our car is a computer on wheels, I don't want it to be this antiseptic thing. I want something which really gives me great pleasure of ownership and experience. And I think we can have and we can have our cake and eat it too. I stepped over to the Sapphire for a moment because I've got to point out a couple of things. This is the $249,000, very luxurious counterpart to the Pure. But what's interesting about these two cars is that they were developed at the same time and the traction control for both was developed at the same time. So you get these two vehicles which really do feel very, very closely related. However, that additional $170,000 gets you some truly staggering and outrageous things. For example, 900 kilowatts of power, three motors and 0 to 60 in 1.89 seconds. I'm finding it very difficult to describe just what that feels like, but when we had a go a moment ago, my eyeballs went weird, the butterflies just continued and continued, and that feeling of continuing acceleration is like nothing I have ever felt before in my entire life. Truly outrageous. The Pure's particular combination of power, performance, range, price and weight clearly outdo the Tesla Model S, Porsche Taycan, Mercedes EQS and Polestar 4. It's oozing with nerdy, brilliantly executed engineering and refined design. The Sapphire is its totally bonkers A-lister sibling, with the Touring and GT representing the sliding scale in between. I'm fascinated to see the response to Gravity later this year and what the $48,000 smaller Lucid has in store too. So what makes a Lucid special? 
Well, I think the answer lies in recognising that we're at a strange juncture where electric vehicles need to define what driving character and engineering prowess means in this electric era, whilst also delivering seamless technology experiences, being profitable for manufacturers and affordable for consumers. And that creates a fissure between the tech-first Teslas and other startups, the Chinese OEMs and all of the EVs that are coming from China, and the legacy OEMs. And I think what Lucid does extremely well is straddle those spheres extremely elegantly. And it's no wonder that licensing their technology to those legacy OEMs is their next big power play. And I am so intrigued to watch that chapter unfold. Let us know what you think in the comments. Please do like and subscribe. And if you have been, thank you for watching.